What are, you, what are you currently reading? What am I currently reading? I'm reading Christopher Gilden's All Hallows. It, it seems to be a novel that happens all on Halloween night. It's really good. Like everything I read by Christopher Gilden, it's really, really good. I just read Kelly Link's, it's either White Dog, Black Cat, or Black Dog, White Cat, or... Those four words are in it. I'm not sure of the order, but it's, but it's really good. <laughs> when you sit down to write, do you know how a book will end? I have no idea whatsoever. Uh, I'm afraid if I did know how it was going to end, I don't think I would write it because I, I write to get to the surprise, which makes it tricky when you're doing a slasher. With a slasher, you kind of need to drop clues and stage red herrings and do all that kind of stuff. But I'm usually surprised. Like I'll get to towards the end and I'm like, well, this person's still alive. Maybe they're the killer, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. What's the fastest book you've ever written? 72 Hours, The Long Trial of Nolan Dugatti. I used to do the three-day novel contest back probably 18 years ago, maybe 15, something like that. And I've done that, I've done it twice. I've written two novels and over separate 72-hour periods. You do seem to write fast. You said you wrote two short stories on the airplane. I did, yes. They're, I mean, they're fairly short stories for short stories, but, and also I had to rework a script of Earth Divers as well. And so are you just always writing? You know, I'm not always writing, but I try to fill every space of the day I can with writing. Like, I remember when Goblet of Fire came out, people were standing in line at the bank reading that book. They're sitting in traffic reading that book. They're walking on the sidewalk reading that book. They're trying to fill every space of their day with that book. That's how, when I'm writing a novel, that's how I write a novel. I don't generally have six hours to string together, but I can steal 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, and add it up into two or three hours over a day. Have you ever been asked by a publisher to slow down to build more anticipation for your work? When I signed on with my new agent in 2014, she told me rule number one is you can't do four books a year anymore. She said that's too much. It, these book publications need to be events. You don't want the audience saying, oh, it's just another book by that dude. So she did slow me down. However, I guess this year, let's see, this year I had Earth Divers come out, I had Babysitter Lives come out, and I think Next year, the plan right now is to have two novels coming out, so I'm getting to build back up to where I want to be. What's your favorite flavor of La Croix? Probably that pample mousse. I'm not sure how to say it, but I like, is that, I don't know how to say it. P-A-M-P-L-E-M-O-U. Right. I did. Say it, say it again. Pample mousse. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry we couldn't put any pample That's all right. in, your, in your refrigerator. <laughs> we did try. <laughs> What's the sharpest thing you've ever held while writing? Probably just a caping knife, which is um, a little, it's kind of a, it's a little short knife that has a blunt edge, but it's all sharp on that edge. I keep that one close to my desk. It's for caping a bull elk or a, 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 a deer. Um, I, the cape is like, it's the neck and shoulders, the skin. And so a caping knife has to be really sharp. You don't want to mess that up for the taxidermist. But I'm always in between paragraphs, sentences, chapters. I'll play with that knife a lot. It's a little one, so I, I always feel like I can play with it safely, but it never turns out safe. Is that what you do? You just sort of flip it in your finger? Yeah, yeah. After writing, what do you do to decompress before returning to normal family life? I used to play basketball, but I've had so many surgeries I had to give that up. And then I used to play pool, but I blew my shoulder out, so that's not so easy anymore. And I used to play hacky sack, but I blew my knees out. So now I mountain bike. I hit the trail for two or three hours. And because you're right, you do need to decompress. It's like it's like you're moving from one world to another, and you are really. And it's hard to hard to realize that the living room you're walking into doesn't conform to the rules that you just established in this terrible novel or whatever. In the Lake, if, if the Lake Witch trilogy books were translated to the screen, who would star, who would direct? Oh man, that's a good question. I think, what's her name, Lee Janiak? She did the Fear Streets. She has a really cool way of doing tension on screen, I think. I would like to see what she does. With, with those books. As for who would star, who would play Jade, that's the big question, I think. If, if it's not some newcomer, which if it happens, I bet it will be a newcomer, but I see a lot of people on social media talking about Devery Jacobs being Jade, Devery Jacobs from Reservation Dogs. I think she could do it really well. 
What was your favorite thing about working at a library and your least favorite? My favorite thing was that I was surrounded by books, that every morning when I got to work, someone would have ro rolled a new book card up to my desk. And these are books that I had never seen before, or dissertations, or um, movies to catalog. I loved just living them on books. And I love that on break, my 15 minute break, I could just go walk through the stacks, just up and down one row. And I'd always try to go as well as I could down a different row so I could find different books. And the worst thing about working at a library, um, oh, I know what it was. When I was a gift book cat cataloger, that's where I started out in book cataloging was, was processing the gift, the donations. This is the late 90s. Um, comic books were not circulating yet, really, at least at this library I was at. So we'd get people bringing us big boxes of comic book collections that hadn't been seen for 40 years. And the library's policy was that I had to throw them in the dumpster. Uh, and I couldn't take them home because I got to be the one to decide whether this goes in the, into um, the collection or not. And so if I could take gifts home, that would probably sway my decision, you know? So I, I couldn't take any home and they had to go in the trash and that really hurt my soul throwing away all those comic books. And I wouldn't even let myself look at them after a while because I don't know what, I, I'd be dumpster diving after work, you know? What makes a good slasher movie? What makes a good slasher movie? You gotta hit all the beats. There's probably 12, 14 beats of the slasher. You gotta have the opening blood sacrifice. You gotta have the red herrings. You've gotta have the third real body dump. So you've gotta like, it's like you're going around a carousel and reaching out and hitting 12 or 14 bells as you go around. You gotta hit all those bells for sure. But I think what really makes a good slasher movie is if you're doing a revenge slasher or a mystery slasher, they, I guess they get called both, delaying knowledge of who the slasher is. That's the most pleasurable, such that everything crashes to a head at the reveal when the person pulls their mask off and gives their big speech about, I did this because you did this to me, or whatever it is. What's your favorite time travel film or book? My favorite time travel film is probably Time Crimes. I like that one a whole lot. I, it's really like nested in itself, which I think time travel stories should kind of nest within themselves. Favorite time travel novel, that's a good question. Maybe I'm going all the way back to Jack Finney, you know, to, to his stuff. If you weren't a writer, what would you, what do you think you would be doing? Oh, wow, if I weren't a writer, I always imagine I'd like to be a caver, like spelunking. But then I go into caves and I love the big chambers. I don't like the tight spaces, so I don't think I'd be a good caver. Um, um, you know, in high school, when I was probably 16 or 17, I moved out of the house and a friend had access to a little RV, a little camper trailer in a junkyard. And we lived in that junkyard for a year, year and a half. And I fell in love with junkyards. I would love to run a salvage yard, you know, probably a, a you, you pull them kind of place where people bring their own tools and they go pull, you know, this idler arm or that fender, whatever they need, you know. And it'd be neat to be at the desk and just um, when people ask, um, I've got an 83 Toyota Corolla and you know, I need a new heater core for it. And you could say, you know, I'll 13, six cars down. That'd be neat to know where stuff is, you know? Not <laughs> at all the answer I thought you would say. <laughs> I want to own a junkyard. <laughs> but I've been in one of those, we have one here. Mm -hmm. Those little wild people. Oh yeah, place. yeah. Uh, what did it take for you to get into the mind of your teenage girl narrator in My Heart is a Chainsaw? You know, I think it's that I had a teenage daughter at the time. So I wonder if a lot of Jade's, I don't know, her peculiarities are kind of coming out of watching my daughter and her friends just exist in the world. The hardest moment you've had as a writer? Hardest moment I've had as a writer? It's probably in the late 2000s, like 2008, 2009. In 2007, I had two novels come out and I may not have had another novel until 2010. And so I had like two, two and a half years in there where I didn't have anything showing up on the shelf. And I was wondering, what am I doing? And what am I doing wrong specifically? And so yeah, those, they weren't like down years for me or anything. I was still super busy publishing lots of stories and just doing all kinds of stuff. But I don't think I had any, any new books show up and that was really weird for me. Is there anything you want to say to the world? 
<laughs> you do a lot of interviews. So. Yeah. Anything I want to say to the world? Um, let me think. I never have, I've never been asked this. This is kind of neat. What would I want to say to the world? Um, let's take care of it. Maybe that's what I want to say. You know, I think that's really, you know, this time travel comic I'm doing, Earth Divers, that's kind of what it's about to me. I think time travel stories are basically about regret and the fantasy of being able to go back and fix things. But um, if we can understand, like, if we can understand in the present moment that maybe we just do them right the first time. I think if time travel stories could teach us anything, I think they could teach us to be better now because we're not gonna get the technology to go back in time. I don't, I don't think we are anyways. Um, or if we are, then people are already doing it, you know, from the future, they're already hanging out with us and sculpt, shepherding us this way and that way or messing things up, I don't know. But yeah, I would just say, let's take care of this place and it's, it's easy to feel like it's too late, but I don't think that's exactly the mindset to have, you know? All right, so the next section is all this or that. Okay. So it's just two things and you just pick, I guess. Okay. You don't have to explain if you don't want okay. to. But also, I'm certainly interested if you do explain. Uh -huh. Scooby or Shaggy? Probably Scooby. Slash slasher or psychological? Slasher for sure. I never understand. People say psychological horror and I never have understood that term. It just never makes sense to me. I think everything in here is or entails psychology to some extent, you know, or all narrative anyways. Book, ebook, or audiobook? I read mostly ebooks because I can't always find my reading glasses, but with a device I can make the font big enough that I don't need them. Dogs or cats? Oh, dogs for sure. I've never had a cat. Inside or outside? That's a good question. Inside or outside? Man, I, there's pros and cons of each, aren't there? Um, I guess inside, because I spend so much time being mad at the wind. <laughs> Novel or short story? Oh, man. How about can I choose flash fiction? That's a variety of short story. I love flash fiction. Flash fiction is ending from the very first word. I love the pressure and I love that flash fiction makes you do um, back bends in order to pack more in to the 750 or 1,000 words. I love, love, love flash fiction. Morning person or night owl? Probably night owl. I'm usually up till midnight or one and I'll sleep until eight or 8.30 if you let me. Def leopard or poison? Oh, wow. Probably Def Leppard. I think they have better albums than Poison. Justice or Vengeance? Depends on if you're the perpetrator or the perpetratee, <laughs> I think. Um, justice, I think. And that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was fun. I think we worked hard to ask you questions you haven't been asked before yeah that was just possible that was good that was good i want to know why you're mad at the wind oh man it always just blows like i'll be trying to do work outside and it blows my papers away or it blows my hat off or um on a bike i hate the wind because i'll be riding 20 miles one direction fighting the wind the whole way and i'll think i'll think this is going to work out because the ride home will be a breeze and then i turn around and the wind is against me again and i don't understand that <laughs> it so does you ride on Notepads? No, I write on, well, I mean, some variety of computer. I mean, I will write on a notepad or sometimes I'll write on a, like a tablet of some sort that has a pencil interface, you know? But um, I prefer to be on a computer. Uh, when I write longhand in a notebook or a, a pad or whatever, um, my paragraphs get a lot shorter. And so then when I'm transcribing it, I often have to jam paragraphs together because everything feels like it has too much emphasis. There's too many line breaks. Well, that's interesting because you said you, you wrote, you know, even in 15 minutes, if mm -hmm. you were like standing somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, you're filling that time all the time. Yeah, yeah. Interesting that you need to be at a computer. Yeah, I don't need to be, but I prefer to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can go a lot faster too. I can type a lot faster than I can longhand write. All right. Yeah, cool. That's it. Well, thank you. That was fun. Thank you. That was fun.